do not lock. And you know, they have the door slats across them, so they're definitely a security issue. So um, we were doing, you know, our building for the security of our students. We also have the same issue here. So we, as the landlord, need to spend some money on replacing door hardware. So I'm bringing up to you guys, based on 18 doors, and I think there's only 12 or 13 here total that need to be replaced, but based on 18 doors, it's 21,650 bucks. So the door handle alone is $300. So I would have to replace all of them so they can secure their, their classrooms. That's just the cost of the door handle. And it doesn't change the fact that the doors that we currently have in that area it does not include what we have in admin, which we have the same issue at the, in, up in the ad, ad, admin area as well, with the slats of the doors as well. So, um, you know, just based on security issues and uh, the security of students, you know, our students go here as well. So uh, that's why I am bringing this up. As a replacement, so I think it's probably going to be about 20 doors total if you include admin, 20, 22 doors if you include the admin. Um, but uh, so you're looking 13, 1400 dollars per door to have the doors replaced. If you remember, the cost to replace the doors at the annex was about 650, 700 dollars, 750 a door. That did not include the door handle. Did not include the door, the key cores. You know all that kind of stuff. So we, we do have some additional stuff here that is required that we do not have at the office. I'm sorry, I came in late. I apologize. That's right. Why would you pick the doors? They have the slats in these doors as well, same as what our annex does. Um, so we're, we ordered the doors for the annex, um, but with the fact of you know we have Boone students that go here and all the other students <coughs> that go here at at um, the alternative ed school. They have multiple doors they cannot block because the hardware has failed internally in, in the door handles. So uh, I, I didn't really want to piecemeal that per se. So is it not repairable? What's that? You, can't, you couldn't repair it. The door handles, we'd have to replace the door handles. And they're, my cost is if I buy like a little more, it's like 265 a door handle. So this is, this is and that does not include the key board. These currently are storeroom function, which means they do not have a key, a key cylinder on the inside of the classroom. So you would have to go outside into the hallway to lock the door. We would put a classroom security lock handle in there, just like we did the annex, which would have a key cylinder on the inside. So the teacher can then lock the door from the inside, from the inside. It's like 20 doors? It's, it, well, if you include admin, you're probably looking 20 to 24 total doors. Um, over at River Rock, we're looking at like 13. It's like 12 or 13 uh, for the door for the classrooms that they're currently operating out at this point in time. So um, I'm going to need to spend a fair amount of money in there to be able to secure those classrooms because a lot of the door handles do not work. So my thought was, why spend the time on retrofitting those doors for new door handles if? We have the slats and it's a security issue at our high school, you know. So it's roughly it's roughly 13, 13, 13 doors at what was it the price? Twenty one thousand. It's about thirteen hundred dollars per door. So that'd be sixteen sixteen nine roughly. Or nineteen. Times twenty doors, right? No, it's eighteen uh, doors is twenty one thousand six fifty. And then we'll be 20 to 22 doors? Yeah. So 22 doors times the 1300. Yeah, so if you divide, that's one, eight, It's about $1,300 a door to replace them. I don't know how you cannot do the admin. Well, the door thing that we're going to probably face with in all of our buildings, right? Yeah, I guess. Now we'll spend the money, but I don't know how you, how do you have a safety issue like that with the kids, especially. Yeah, I think it's there's two it's two separate sides of it. it's the the side where the river rock where the students are. I think that's something obviously that we want to move forward. The question is the additional doors for the admin admin area. You know, do we want to spend that money too?
So it's 12 doors in admin, and it's 13 or 14 doors at River Rock. Oh, so I, here and did the, I just did the count, so. Roughly, yeah. At, you know, $13 a door, looking about $32,000 for 25 doors. It, just doing the math on my head real quick. If we're doing the doors already in the high school and we're doing this, is there anybody who can give us, you know, you bring it to a vendor and say, hey, I got 40 doors now that need to be replaced. Can we get a better deal? Uh, the contractor <coughs> I use has been low every time I've shopped their number the last six or seven times. Considerably lower. So, um, and I've used this contractor now for about seven years, six, seven years. And every time I've shopped them when I was at Wilson School District down here, they've been lower by about five to ten percent. I'm sure Kevin will agree with me. <laughs> we'll just push back a little bit. You know, just, that's fine. I it's certainly worth a question. Yep. I mean, that's 25 more doors. That's $30,000. Is it pretty much replacing all the doors? Yeah. That would be the rest. That would be it. No, that would be the first floor here at this building. <clears throat> the annex would be done. Um, if we would ever need to expand to the second floor, then we would have to do those as well. But they're just used for storage currently. Right. So I don't, I don't see the need to do Is those. Yeah. What sense to consider maybe changing to a different style board that's a lot less money? That's just a thought of throwing it out there. I'm not. That's crazy. It's a thought. <clears throat> just, you know. I don't know. I really don't know much about high school. I mean, school Is there grade other doors yes. that I'm this sure. Is your standard high classroom door with your with your light. I mean, the, the door itself is only four four hundred fifty bucks a door. It's the hardware. Um, you know, the door handle, uh, classroom uh, classroom intruder handle. If I buy them singularly, it's about three fifty. Wow. A storeroom function one is about three twenty-five. If I buy them by themselves, um, it was more a question. Yeah, no, no, it, it's, it's understandable. Actually, it's it's, you know, it's it. clocks and door hardware and door. I just yeah, because I'm on this side. <laughs> You're in the yeah. seat, so. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess the. Uh, I mean, all right. One question I had, and you kind of touched on it. If we would ever expand into another part of the building, is there? Do they obsolete this this hardware so it would be different? You know, so you would always be able. Okay, all right. So we this could is the you best could hardware they've made for twenty five years. Okay, so yeah. you could you could piecemeal it and do it do it in section pieces of. Okay. Yeah. The problem the problem with the door handles currently in the annex is they're called what they call storeroom function. So they only have a lock cylinder on the outside of the of the of the of the door. So if you unlock it from the outside, it stays unlocked. If you lock it, it stays locked. Um, if there would be an intruder, the door is unlocked. That teacher would have to leave the classroom, go outside the classroom, lock the door, and then re-enter the, the, the classroom. Yeah. It's just old style. It's, it's just what they did back it's then. Not okay, so I mean, there's two parts of the question. So, all right, I think we have support for moving forward with the, the 13 uh, for River Rock. We an agreement to yeah. uh, go ahead and move forward with that. Now, the second part of that is, is it 18? Is that the, the, the count I heard for for the admin side? No, I think you said 12. 12. It's another, it's another 12 or 13. Yeah. So do we spend another? I think you do, because I mean, I think if someone's going to try to get into this building respectfully, they could come in from this side and get over there. So I mean, I, I'm, I'm just thinking if you're going to, I mean, I just. So, Another fifteen six approximately. I don't know how you can compare. I mean, I don't know how you put them in parallel. I guess. Yeah. You, think it's it's cool. you think it's thirteen hundred? You think it's fourteen hundred? I don't know. If we could, you know, if we could keep them in parallel like that, I mean, that would be. I don't know if we can do. I don't know. Can we make that decision where you don't spend another twelve? Yeah, I think. I think you are you to be consistent. You know. Yeah, you almost yeah. have to. Yeah. So. All right. So that's our recommendation is to move forward thing. with uh, the you know, the ad another, the ad another price. For, for the whole for the whole whole job. Okay. So I'll get a firm count. I'll get another number, um, and I'll email it out to everybody. So you have yeah, it. I don't mean anything by it, but no, I'm like, I would, I would, I would. Have I mean, if the guy, it's guy's like, charging you 13, I don't, maybe. I don't take offense, guys. Trust me. I, no, I, but I, I mean, maybe he'll do 12. For 10%. Maybe he'll do uh, yeah, 10 percent. <laughs> but yeah, at least, yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, the second what thing. What does Skyward say? <laughs> the second thing is the salt storage. Um, project that you were uh, investigating? The salt storage is a little more involved than, than what I thought. I, I thought we could get the blocks delivered 
and kind of build it ourselves. Um, you need a pretty sizable backhoe in order to move them due to their <coughs> weight, and they have to be delivered. So we would have to have a piece of equipment here to unload and so on and so forth. So I am working on getting a concrete number for that project. Um, it is not big, something. You need to, to unload the salt? Unload the blocks, the okay. concrete blocks that make the salt storage area. They're about 9,000 pounds of people that deliver that can't deliver that on a, on a They do not. A, a, a they, they do not have a crane, no. Really? That's, wow. Yeah. Is there another company out there? I never yeah. heard of somebody <laughs> able to deliver That's what I'm thinking. Out. No. So, but then we would have to run a, a backhoe, and, and there's, 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 there's more work There's more work than just kind of landing in, in there. Are you thinking about wrecking it yourself? I was thinking about it, yeah. Um, you know, and, and the more I've talked to a couple different contractors, the more they're like, Casey, just let us come in and let, let us let, let us take care of it. I'm like, okay. You can't get a price on the release. I will. Yep. So just wanted to bring you guys up to speed on that. So we'll we'll continue to, to let them stockpile salt where they have, and, and we'll put the, the, the sock around it to prevent the, the, the migration from rain and stuff like that. So uh, just to let you know that that's, that's in the works, just not going to be ready and not going to be done in order for this year. Um, that was that one. Um, the BEC security, um, you, you guys had asked for a price to uh, provide a basic security system for the building. So I had Berkshire <coughs> Systems over. They are proposing a new um, keypad dialer because the system that we currently have is made by somebody else and put Simplex's name on it. It's no longer supported because it's a 30-year-old system when the building was built. So, and six cameras um, and nine motion sensors. So the motion sensors would set an alarm off and then the cameras would be able to view just the basic areas of the main hallways where they would come in by the doors. That cost is $11,960. And that is based on CoStar's pre-bid pricing. So. I have a question about the six cameras. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think it's great that we get a catch on. But I think if you're alerted and the police are called, chances are we're going to catch it before any damage is done. As much as I'd like to have cameras in the empty building, we really need them. How much was the cameras? Uh, they didn't break that out. I, I know the yeah. indoor cameras I purchased for the uh, middle school, the replacement ones are about $110 a piece. So. You know, they're, these are going uh, on IP cameras that we would be using. Yes, they're 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 uh, POE. Yes. Yep. If, okay. they're, if they're activated, you're going to be able to see this on your phone. No. Well, I, I would be, but I wouldn't get an I would not get an alert to somebody being in the building. It would just be something that we could provide video to the police if any if anything happens at at the school. It depends how Matt sets it up. Scott, you know, because these are IP cameras, it's they are technically going to the cloud. So I don't know what the back end of this is, but uh, mine it's something you can. Mine in my club, I have a constant. It, 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 any any motion, it it records it, and I think it's 24 hours or 36 hours. It'll delete it and keep going. Yeah, yeah it'll do. So that if you ever wanted to see something at that point, it's not like you're watching it all the time, but. Correct. Is there any other bids, or are we just doing one bid? I just wanted to. This is just a, a simple, here's the cost uh, uh, cost area. Um, if, if you guys want to get other bids, I have no problem going out to get other bids. I just, if you're willing to spend the 12000 if you think spending $12,000 is a wise decision, then I'm going to go out and get other, other numbers. Like, that's fine. Well, right now. well the, here's, the, here's the other thing. We're, we're also um, in negotiations and talking with gr other groups about using the building. You know, if something would happen, okay, you're going to have that that evidence piece that somebody was in a space of the building they shouldn't have been. Or yeah, I don't think either one of these groups are going to be a problem, no, but it is it is something that um, I do have two that I used in the past for other businesses that maybe you might want to consider it's fine. pricing. I forgot to mention, Mr. Strobel joined us and. Mr. Rathgeb is now here in his ex officio oh. capacity. Okay. Well, what's your. Uh, I, 
personally, I feel like it's uh, money worthwhile spending, um, considering we yeah. it, it eventually, you know, when the building is open, you're going to need a, a security system in there. So having a basic security system to start with, I think, is is a good start. Eleven nine sixty. And that is that is a PA state contract. So that's and that's worst case. So if if we if you bid it, maybe it comes down a little bit. Maybe it's the same, but it shouldn't be any worse than that. Right. Okay. So I think you got your approval to go ahead with. I'll move with those. Um, and then just the future project updates. Oh, your Monocacy gym lights. You do. Oh, Monocacy. Yeah, sorry. Um, Monocacy gym lights. We've discussed this in the past. They provided us a number of a uh, quote of $6,000 for the equipment back in December of 17. That was with us having to do new <coughs> wiring to the, the wall switches and trying to reuse the wall switches that were there, which we cannot do after kind of tearing into them. So um, luckily we waited a year and technology has made life a little bit better, but it's definitely added some cost. So the same fixture with wireless dimming and wireless switches. So these switches um, are exactly that, they're wireless. We mount them on the walls, they're battery powered, um, and they have the same functionality as what we currently have there, and we would be able to dim the LED lights that are in the gymnasium. Um, that's what that, the whole system is for that's currently in there that just does not work. So if dimming is a need, which I believe it is for uh, the staff there and for events that they have. Uh, we are looking at $10,287.30 for equipment only. Does not include install. So we would uh, install that in house. Because what's nice is all we have to do is run a lift, change the fixtures out, mount the keypads on the wall, they come in and they program them with their little laptop and away we go. So um, you're looking another $700 for a living probably for a week, roughly. Um, delivery, rental, pickup, and then a day or two's worth of work in there and some miscellaneous electrical fittings. So yeah, I believe when we talked about this last time, there were rebates available. For, for these lights from Med Ed? These are not because we have compact fluorescence and these currently do not meet the energy consumption thresholds. For of what you're replacing? Yeah. Okay. And that gym is getting very dark, so it's something we are going to need to do very, very soon because <clears throat> uh, the fixtures are just slowly failing. So, what are we looking at for that whole? So package. looks like 10287 plus a $700 lift. Yeah, it's um, not, they I have, don't they have tax on that, we don't pay tax. But, so it's $9,700 for the materials, and then another like $2,000 worst case scenario for lift rental, miscellaneous hardware, fittings, wiring, blah, blah, blah. blah. Roughly $11,000 <laughs> yeah. all in. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but um, Mr. Strobel and Mr. Uh, Scott, what you put your opinions on it? I'm fine with it. I mean, it's fine, but I mean, I just to throw an idea out because we're talking about doing this with other things, but uh, you know, maybe the person who gives us a lift, we could give them a little bit of a sponsorship. <laughs> in local. I'm not like, I, I'm not, I'm, to, I'm not actually not joking around. Because like, Total Rental was like right there in, uh, in Douglasville. Now I know they're in Pottstown. I know the owner of that, you know. Maybe I could call Chris and say, hey, you know, just give us a, can you give us a lift? I'll, I'll get you a sign up in the, in the, I don't know, just for, for not for nothing. I don't know if it's worth it, but. Yeah. It's always, always. But helps. anyway, I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Reliability on the wireless bit? Yeah. This is, this is a, it's a GE right. product. So it's, it's, it's not some fluff fly by night, no name outfit. So. Um, and my vendor even said, he said that they have it in a couple applications now and they're really impressed with how easy it is to install, easy it is to program, and, and it's been very reliable for, for them. So, uh, yeah, these, these should help you at least a little bit on your power consumption curve yep. because the compact collections still have a 
a lot of in rush current. Okay. So, and these are you know <coughs> gym proof lights fixtures. So and it's K through two in there, but we have after school activities in there that are older kids. So um, it's not just. He needs the okay on this, like real yeah, soon. Yeah, right, right. We're, so we're talking next month? We're no, it's okay? most we, likely when, when this so is we, a project you're going to fit in in the summer or over the weekend. We could do it weekend. over a break. We could do it a day here, a day there. I, I, I would like, as the tariffs are actually making LED prices go up a little bit, from what I understand, <laughs> from talking to a couple of vendors. So, um, you know, the, the LED is not getting cheaper as everybody thought it was going to. I mean, as they're making them cheaper, it's just costing more for the stuff that's besides that, you know, kind of thing. So, um, so I would like to at least get the equipment purchased in <coughs> our hands and then we can, we can pick, pick a way out. Because right now they do not use the dimming rack that's there, so we would be able to hopefully uh, put one up and change them as we go, and then they, we would just have to change the dimming switches after the fact to give them that ability is what I'm hoping to do, and that's what we, we were discussing. So. All right, so well, we'll you, the committee's recommending we move forward okay. with it, so. Um, all right, your future projects update. Just the future project updates. Um, train has finally got it back to me with all of the equipment specs and um, pricing, so I will be getting with Lauren here um, probably right after the holidays to go over this. And then, um, you know, we'll, I'll send everything out to you guys and then we can get on the agenda to purchase the equipment and that will be a replacement probably for, i say, Easter break. These are these are the high school roof? The, the roof. gym rooftops yeah. and the high, high school. school office for rooftops. Okay. So, um, we're not going to meet. The, we're not going to get it in at Christmas. There's, there's no way uh, due to timing. I think the equipment six or eight week lead time. So we, we're not rushed to order it. So I, I just want to get everything organized, get it to you guys, so it can be put on the agenda, so everybody truly understands what's being quoted and what would have to be bid. Because mm -hmm. train, uh, there's certain things we have to do to our control system at the high school in order to accept the new units. So uh, we've spent probably the last month with Train, they made three site visits to go over things, and there's certain upgrades we must do in order for the new equipment to communicate to our system. So the control package <coughs> is solely on them, so they will do all control, removal, and install startup programming, um, and there's some controllers that have to be upgrade, up upgraded, so uh, the original numbers that were provided to you guys that we had in discussion have gone up a little bit, and I just I haven't really had a chance to kind of go through this and really kind of dissect what they're what they're what they all have. I want to make sure everything's in there, so there are no surprises. So when I come back to you guys with a number, it's the true number. So, um, so you'll you'll be hearing more from me. Um, I'll I'll shoot it out so you guys can look it over too before the next meeting. And I'll have some explanations in there as to what it is and why we have to do what we have to do. Okay? All right. Okay. Um, Can I ask one question of him? Sure. Mm -hmm. Just no big deal, but are we ready for uh, <laughs> for winter with heat? Because yes, I have oh. a particular group of ladies that like to call me directly when there's no heat in the high school. So I just to make sure they were kind of prepared for it. We're, we're fine. I mean, there, there's been a couple little little things. What's happening is about every <coughs> second or third Monday, we have a ghost that comes into the high school and makes about 25 units go off on fault. Um, and, and it just happens. I mean, I don't know if it's a power flip that rolls through this area or what. So literally every Sunday night, I sit there with my laptop and I look for classrooms that might be too cold. Monday morning, I do the same thing. Um, you know, I'll get a text from Mr. Spores saying, hey, I have a couple classrooms I recall than the ones I missed. Um, so um, other than that, we've had little to no real issues. Um, Birdsboro, I will tell you, has been great. I have the heat on, the boilers are on, all the Univent fans are off. Every unit is producing between 75 and 85 degree just uh, air just coming off the units. 
when we had the cold spell a week and a half ago, I walked through there, not one classroom was below 64 degrees. And the humidity was below 40% in every room. So um, I've turned off all the dehumidifiers except for a couple. <clears throat> so we don't have to spend that electric. And I'll be making a walk through in there again on Wednesday before the holiday break just to make sure all is okay. So it looks like we're maintaining that building fairly easy by just running the boilers and the pumps with no fans running. I have a couple, like the stair tower units, I have the fans on. Uh, end of the hallways, I have the fans on just to kind of keep the hallways a little toasty where the windows are, and, that, and that's it. So um, right. that, that's been actually going on very, fairly well. Thanks. That's all I have. Okay. Question from old, old business. We, we had talked about, um, when Aaron was here last meeting, we talked about salt purchase and how it was so much higher than it kind of took him off his chair. Was oh. there any decisions in the renegotiation of yes. our salt? Um, salt is now 120 a ton and no charge to spread. And you can thank Mr. Durso for that conversation because that, that deduction, because that conversation happened before I had a chance to get a hold of Nate myself. He said, I already talked to Aaron, we're good to go. And he told me this is what we this is what was discussed. What was it before? It was 160. And we paid for it to be spread. So. They, oh, so they spread it at, at 120. Yeah. Okay. We spread it at 160 before. Right. Plus, the plus, 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 yeah, plus the cost of spread. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, so right. like I said, Aaron, Aaron, Mr. Durso had that conversation before I got a hold of We're just lucky to have Aaron. Myself. Yeah. <coughs> I just want that recorded. <laughs> Can I go back to Birthburn real quick? Uh huh? So we're, we're keeping that at 64? We're maintaining just with the, the, just with the space, just with hot water going through the coils in the units about 64. <clears throat> the 68 degrees at every room. Not one room was that cold. Think you can take a little lower or not? I'm going to, but I was kind of waiting for a good, really cold extended spell. Um, like every time I go over, I load the supply temperature down about 10 degrees. But and you're kind controlling of, the temperature by taking the boiler down, which is not really a great thing to do to a boiler. It's actually yeah. terrible, but I'm just saying that's how he's been adjusting the temperature. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's no, no the thermostats. Yeah, well, there's yeah, no yeah. thermostats. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, so I, I've, been, I've been trying to find that happy medium that I can maintain the building. When it's unoccupied, with no sense of anything freezing, but still have high enough water that I can dehumidify it and, and um, maintain temp. So uh, I want to keep it warm when it's 40 degrees outside. I have, I have my little notes. I, I do have my notes. It's still be your own thermostat. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, the last item on the agenda is um, the G GCA update. So um, we do have uh, Mr. Burns and uh, Mr. Silverthorne here from uh, from GCA to talk about the world of uh, janitorial services and maintenance. Casey was leaving. Remember? Well, um, we, we were going around with the study with things. Did you guys have any questions for? You want me to just talk, or do you have any questions first, or? Um, yeah, we. I was just. We were going around with the report cards again. If you guys need to see that, uh, and just some of the pictures I've taken recently. Um, it's just some of the stuff we were working on the projects. Uh, over the summer, we did the cafeteria floor. Um, that I did that with a couple of managers, uh, so the workers didn't do any of that. We worked on that uh, outside of the hours. Uh, but if you guys want to take a look at, at a few things, uh, we have pictures here. Um, Everything but Monocacy, my printer ran out of heat. Uh, that's the full cards of Monocacy uh, going back for uh, a while. Uh, some of the stuff you'll see some improvement um, with the report cards, uh, just going straight to the principles and back. Uh, a lot of notes there to the send them out to the teachers. Um, Middle school, um, pretty happy with the board. We had issues with the So, did you find out what was wrong with it? Yeah, it's just the water seeping up through the bottom of the floor through the concrete. Right. Keep drilling a really some pressure. That's, I guess that's the only thing you can do. A lot of issues sometimes with like bathrooms and stuff. So, it's just a, one random inspection uh, with the bathroom. Uh, I like taking pictures as I go through. 
This is the cafeteria floor that we strip all of down to the top. I have a four half and you can see the shade. It's like something <coughs> sitting on half of it. Okay. So, but grounds have always been pretty good. Um, you know, overall, okay. there is there is issues at a couple buildings we're working on. Um, the middle school, uh, we had a boy that, that was not performing, so we, we moved her to the other side. I didn't know she had switched routes, actually, um, until we went over and did a station, and then one of the teachers had emailed. Um, had no idea until that came about. Uh, moved her back to the other side, put the new uh, Gary uh, Ingham came back. Uh, he's working you guys before. Uh, he's back, so he's back at middle school working. Um, so that's good. So the employee that was no good, we just put her in a different area? Moved her for now and tried to replace her. I don't oh. want to remove her and leave the building. <clears throat> middle school's always been kind of self-sufficient. They, they, they normally they, they do a really good job there. I don't want to rock the boat by plucking I, her I, out. Yeah, I, I didn't understand. So she's up for replacement. Then. Oh, absolutely. It's, yeah, no, no question about that. Um, and there's a couple others that were up for replacement also that, that we've already worked on replacing those. Uh, I moved uh, one head custodian uh, to a different position um, who, who was performing but could be, could have been better. So Kendall uh, Noel came back uh, and now he's the head custodian in that, that building. So that works out well. He's really good. And, uh, I'm just wishing you more. I guess, you know, I understand. I mean, I look at these pictures and Pictures don't really do do a whole lot for me, you know. I, right. I mean, I, what I what I'm most interested in is what when people come up and you know, the administrator says, "Hey, you know, I, we have this particular area it continues to be a problem. It's right. not, you know, those are the kind of, that's the kind of feedback that most interests me. You know, I, Mr. Spores, as as you know, um, I didn't see a report card in here for the high school unless I missed it. There is one in each folder, actually. So here's the hospital. It's, it's oh. per building, sorry. Uh, all right, there we go. Yeah, that, that's I, the high I, school. And I don't know if I've received uh, Mrs. Spores' report card. Perhaps it would be better than being Mike Burns, DCA. Uh, would it be better to look at this from the work order protocol? As we discussed, mm -hmm. we're showing pictures, they're showing report cards and mm -hmm. dating. Um, <coughs> My understanding from Jamie that or what I had expected, I guess, was that the, we would be responding to questions. We tried to prepare everything in response to questions we might get, um, uh, issues that were brought up in a facilities community meeting a couple of months ago. However, what our main goal was in a meeting with Kathleen at the end of September was to address the work order closure issue. Um, and I think one of the areas we've made significant improvement in is addressing work order closure. Uh, for the period from uh, 6 6 to 9 25, we had can't see 45, 45 um, active work orders from 8-1, that's not, that's not my fault, excuse me. From 10-3 to 11-19, we have 132 work orders remaining open. For the period, from 10-27 to 11-4, we generated 13 work orders, and in this list, we completed 71. For the period 11-5 to 11-11, 12 were generated, 12 work orders were generated, 75 were completed. For the period 11-12 to 11-19, 19 work orders were generated, 49 were completed. Going back <coughs> from when we started with Kathleen's program, I think we had 454, does that sound right? 454 work orders open 
average days open were 58.1. Our total hours of labor used from 10-3 to 11-14 were 658. Breaking all this down for you is, comes to this. Our <coughs> FOM goal nationwide as a company is five work orders per day per man. We are averaging three. We would like to increase that. Our goal was to get to 60 open work orders per month. We are at 132 open from the time we started. Some of this involves old work orders where we have instruction issues, we have parts issues, we have a number of things that we have to address, either through Casey or Jamie and his crew. I get a question for you, yes. Mike. Um, who, did, who closes the ticket? Is the person who opened the ticket, do they have a say in when it's closed? <coughs> Well, that's one of the things we've been working on with Casey, but primarily it should be who opens, whoever is assigned to, is who should be closing. All right, um, the I'm, a te I'm a teacher. I got, I got something, uh, got something going on in my room. I, I, I asked the ticket be open, okay, and that, that should go into the work order system. It's assigned eventually to somebody. They, they come take care of the issue. Now, me as the teacher who initially opened it. I should be the one said before it's closed to say, yeah, it was it was done sufficiently. It's closed. Is, is that how it happens, or no, the person no. that normally when it's assigned to someone, the person that it's assigned to, they they will close the ticket. <clears throat> now I'm not sure if they get a notification. The teacher that opened the ticket, um, I yeah. know I get a notification on a lot of stuff. Yeah, because that that I mean we have a IT an outsource we outsource our IT department. And uh, that's how that works. And if you have an issue, you open a ticket, it's assigned to someone, they, whatever, they res supposedly resolve the issue, but it's not actually closed, it's closed, it'll automatically close within a certain amount of time mm -hmm. that you have as the initiator to say, no, it's, I still have a problem, or yeah, it's good, and you just let it, you know, self close. I just wanted to know if there's a, is a closing that loop with the person who actually opened it up, if that actually happens. Or a customer service question at the end: Has your problem been satisfactorily resolved? Right before the before the work order is closed, that the person who initiated agrees that it should be closed. It's one of the areas down. where your question is from from one of the things that I saw. I think one of our most difficult and challenging and going through the work orders as Casey addressed the issue via email was the painting of the. Uh, administrative offices and the new installation of door frames and windows and that. The, the powder coating of the framing made the painting of it particularly challenging. Um, we had, I believe, Ken Temblin and John <coughs> and Ron Hevelo all involved. The communication Completion, inspection, and closure did not go the way it was supposed to go. And I'm doing this, I'm sorry, from memory of these work orders in this particular case. Ken Temblin, I believe, was the primary maintenance tech assigned to that task. The work order was opened. The painting was begun. And it was inspected by Casey and self-inspected by Ken and then Ron and Don Freeman became involved. Then what happened? They, Ron and Casey left Don and, and Ron to finish the paint. They painted and because it was in the afternoon we can't paint with the kids or mainly staff in the building. They painted and left. Um, now, like you were saying, the issues on the powder coating is it, it doesn't stick very well. Um, so unless you roughed it up first or didn't make some kind of other preparation, it's primered. So you would think you would just paint it and walk away. That is not the case. They painted it. 
twice there and then t I think twice more after that to get it completely covered. And I could probably find a mark now that maybe still could have used another touch. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't referring to any specific oh, right. no, issue. What we're saying like is Casey's inspection referred to dissatisfaction with what he encountered and accurately. It, when you go back and look at it, even the pictures we saw mm -hmm. and yep. the, the follow-up inspection showed that it was not done satisfactorily. Who closed that work work? Kenny. Kenny. Because he, th this is what we're talking about here, you're, you're, who opened the ticket and, and, and who's closing it. So he closed it before he saw it again, is, is part of the problem, and before I could even see it. Mm -hmm. So he closed it that night. I came in the next day, and before I could get to it, Casey Had found seen it for it. me. Found it, and we all went to the same conclusion. This is not done, right. but it was tech closed by your guy, by our guy, Ken oh. Temlin, uh, who is highly regarded oh, I'm, for his for his effort. Everybody oh. knows him. He's an old <coughs> hand here. Talk to Ron and Don, and his awareness of what he was painting <coughs> was not sufficient to the work work. Yes, sir. Again, I maybe I misunderstood. We're talking about one issue that had an unforeseen problem that had to go through a resolution process. And right. it sounds like that resolution process for the ticket got closed. And I think Mike's question is, and I know it's certainly one of my questions has been, he's keeping them on a spreadsheet. You know, this process of opening and closing them and getting the work done in a timely fashion has been is the real issue. And I think it's an overriding versus one particular issue. I think that this that is the exception, but the, the question exception. was how do we close it? Right, and how you close it, but we spun off into, we're talking about just that one particular job. Mm -hmm. So when the ticket gets closed, does it email the person who opened the ticket, the teacher? Mr. Sports, what, how do we? Let me just hop in here. Okay. okay. So the head custodians or the principals or a designated <clears throat> person in each building can enter work orders. Um, and that is because if we had teachers entering work orders, we would have thousands of work orders that were useless, okay? Um, so we rely on the custodians and the head, the head custodians to kind of filter through those work orders and enter the ones that he cannot, he or she cannot address themselves. Um, the new system will send an email to the requester when the work order is completed. So if, if Mr. Spores enters the work order for one of his teachers, their staff completes the, the, the task, marks it complete, he will get an email, correct me if I'm wrong, Aaron, you will get an email stating the work order has been completed, and in that work order it states the process with which the work order was completed, um, with what the staff has done. <coughs> um, so um, that's what's nicer about the newer system than what the old system was. The old system, we got nothing. They just got closed, and, and unless we went back through it, we, we would not know. If there's any questions that the staff has in regards to a work order, there's a note box. They can go in, enter a notation, a question, and it says save an email. So anybody associated with that work order now, uh, technician, requester, anybody whose name has been emailed through that process will receive the email. What's that? The master, master, master library. Level library. Yeah. You guys yep. work master library. Yep. Yeah. So this has been a whole lot better that way. Um, you know, to and it, it's it's more user friendly. It's simpler. It's it's easier. Um, and I might have this might be a really stupid question, but I have to ask it. If I'm managing anything, it's a group of people here, and he finishes a job, and he wants to close the ticket, he can communicate to me if I'm responsible. And every day I'm going to have seven closed tickets. As a manager, I'm going to walk, touch them all, and we'll close them. And we never have that issue ever occur again. It just seems like a simple process. Right. I don't want to tell you how to run your business, but it just seems to me that would be very simple to do. <clears throat> Make sense? All right, absolutely. And then, and then once, a, once a day, once a week, sometime, you know, what did you do yesterday? What are you doing now? <laughs> you know, what's in your way? Mm -hmm. With Casey, it could be a five-minute spin-up meeting in the morning. Which buildings, you know, if you're having a problem, you know, you'll knock the walls down. If, you, if there's desks in the way, I can't clean the floor, it'll be taken care of. And it's all communication. Right. It just seems like, you know, it's this big circle going around. And I haven't been on the board long enough to experience all the issues over time, but we're still talking about closing a ticket 
and making sure that it gets to the right person and who actually closes the ticket versus the person that's doing the work. Again, you have a bad worker. That happens, right? You know, you can't control. Not everybody's going to be the best. It's going to be different levels. They start closing tickets, and you know, we're in the same spot again. Versus, so what are we changing? What's changing that's going to help this process better? Versus, we keep regurgitating the same thing. Like, but isn't Kevin timing still <clears throat> is an issue too here? Not only closing, but well, then where I was that was my after we get done part this part, I was going to get into Mr. Spores because okay. we, have, we have an open ticket issue still, it's still there. Yeah. That was my next to be my second one, but I want to go to this one first. <coughs> no. What's changed? That's going to happen. So, so I have daily contact now with the maintenance staff. Okay. Um, we, we get numbers on what work orders they are closing. We're okay. still gathering that information as we go through. Um, some of the stuff uh, changing light bulbs. I'm, I'm, I don't think I need to ex inspect anything like that. Uh, Ballast. That that's all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I shouldn't. If you walk into lights on, then we would get another complaint. Painting, since it's been such an issue, definitely gets inspected now. Um, and the higher the higher uh, risk uh, How many issues. tickets would you say get closed on average per day? Um, three guys, three per three four per guy. I mean, it should be twelve. Twelve tickets. Uh, or How so. long would it take you to validate those twelve tickets? Yeah. No, no, a couple hour, of hours. Half hour. Yeah, yeah. Because once, keep in mind, once I walk to every building, every everybody with every question bombards me. So right. Okay. All the all the custodians and everyone else. So. I got you. Uh, but a couple of hours. I, I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to. I'm, I'm just, I want to come up with a solution versus right. same story or regurgitate the same story over. So. Absolutely. And that makes sense. I mean, if you have the opportunity to do that. Um, but then the second question part would be with with Aaron. I mean, you open up the ticket. You feel like you're getting the response that you should get, or sort of how many open tickets? Because it's, it, it's getting it's, it's gotten better since the last board meeting. When, okay. when we talked at that last board meeting, and my report was requested. I feel like the work order completion has been better. If we want to get on the high school and the and the uh, railings or in the uh, doorways, those were painted and completed. Casey was on vacation. He didn't even get back. I didn't call him. I didn't text him. I didn't say a word about it and it was bad i mean you can see it you could see it from across the office no one came to inspect it because no one said a word before casey got back and came to see me and he walked in and looked at my office doorway and was like what what is this i didn't say a word then once casey said something then you came up and then it was let's fix this so if nothing was ever said that was going to be that way for the public to see that no one no one was going to take it upon themselves and the other thing is not work order completion it's work order enter so if you look at all the workers that have entered over the course of just this school year, let's go back to August 1st. Let's just use August 1st. If you look at who's entered the work orders, it's been probably for the high school, now I'm speaking. It's me and Casey. Oh, I think it's over uh, 90, or 87%. <coughs> it's me and Casey entering work orders. I, though I, I enter them and I make sure they get entered for staff that contact me, my opinion of that and, and staff management is if a staff member or teacher comes to me with a work order that they notice or they need in their classroom, I could see entering it. But not the daily walk through the hallways and see a huge ceiling towel looking like there's a wet basketball on top of it because it's full of water. That shouldn't be something that GCA is entering or maintenance staff is entering. But those are the things that I'm constantly entering, is, is stuff that could easily be spotted through visual inspection. And then number two is when I enter a work order for a wet ceiling tile, I can only see the wet ceiling tile because I'm not allowed to bring tools and figure out what's going on above the ceiling to cause the wet tile. They just replace the wet ceiling tile. That's it. And then five days later, the next rainstorm, there's another wet ceiling tile that's falling. And now we're actually having a fall because I don't have enough time to make sure I'm inspecting every inch of the school all day long. Mr. So now they're just falling. Mr. Spores, um, you know, a couple of these, uh, your report cards here that I see you, you filled out can almost consistently you you rate them failing for a proactive nature of maintenance of the maintenance part. Is this a situation you're yeah. talking about? Yeah. So you, you feel that you know if it's something so obvious it should already be entered by the head custodian in that building. Correct. It should not be yourself or or, or Casey when you walk and through. To identify just that problem. How would you fix that? What can we expect to sort of change? So we do the same thing over and over again. We get the same result, right? So what would change? That we can fix that problem. Make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and we talk we, about a solution versus just the 
same propaganda. And we can start by retraining it to do head custodian there. Um, so we can start by just retraining the head custodian. Um, but keep in mind, at, at those 70, 80, whatever work orders, you know, we're trying to keep up with those in addition to finding other stuff. I think it's what he's talking about is when you're walking down the hall and there's a ceiling tile going to right. out. And we look. And some of the stuff we've involved in the solution. I get it. We've replaced without a work order. Some of, them, um, some of them are, every time it rains, he said that, that you get the same problem. Um, so, so that would be a roof issue. Um, one unit was leaking. Um, we found uh, 228, uh, Aaron was, uh, was upstairs, uh, right above the office. The unit had dropped in the back. So that, yes, they were still replacing the same time. Uh, and there's three guys standing there. Uh, uh, some district people and some uh, GCA employees. And they're all standing there trying to figure out why this keeps leaking. And I could walk up and see the unit had dropped, the, the uh, VAV box. So <clears> you had a pipe going up. So I don't know who it thought. Yeah, you, you had a pipe, a drain pipe going up that would run water back into the unit. Then you had a unit that was down in one corner, dripping all the water out of that one side. So every time you had issues, you had that. Uh, now, how many of those throughout the building, I'm not sure, but that's what we're working on, is locating those issues like that. Um, and, and it's only with my involvement that it may, it may get better, uh, and that's retraining. Getting the guys so they're not going to a unit and, and thinking they hit a wall and, oh, we need to call someone else. That's what we're trying to change. Uh, we have a couple guys like that now. We want to change that thing uh, so, that, so that we can be proactive once we get caught up. We would love to be caught up at the high school. I would love to have a full-time maintenance guy just at the high school because it's so heavily used and needs the most attention. I would love to have one person just at high school all the time. And get to the guy next to you, why can't he have that? I have started that. And then you know I'm what I mean? I'm, my question is, why, why, why don't we do that? You know, I, somebody works for you saying, we need this, and it would really help. And when, I believe once you get caught up, you might be able to stay caught up and do those things he's talking about. Absolutely. And we talked about management of resources. Um, one of my original thought when I got here was that with this was that Ken was that guy, but his his experience not only what we assign, but what he knows he's he's accessible to the schools. His phone goes off, hey I'll be right there, I'll take a look at it. If we do this with what what Jamie is asking for from a resource point of view, then I would like that as well, but that we keep a maintenance tech here specifically. Or if that becomes true, do we then put a maintenance tech for each school? Is that what we're going to put in place? How does that work? Or the middle school and the high school? At the end of the day, it's a resource here, issue. This is really a problem that you have to determine. I know there's an additional cost there, but they can't fall back. On, on, on anybody other than your own company. Yep. And, and then what would the benefit be if you got caught up? So that's just, you have to determine that, and then so we're not having these meetings all the time, and they're not putting all the stuff in. Mm -hmm. It yeah. makes sense to me, I get it, cost versus income, I get it, but at the end of the day, it's been bad for so long in everybody's mind. This is, you got somebody sitting next to you saying, this will work, I'm gonna make it work. Yeah, nothing to lose. Yeah, and from my perspective, being Mr. Spores being a vice principal, I mean, I, you know, an important part of his job to do classroom observations, and yes, I'm sure you have kids for discipline, all that. I mean, those are the core parts of his job, and just like traffic control, you know, for election day, you know, unfortunately, he's out there. That shouldn't be part of his job. It becomes that, and the same thing with you know, constantly keeping you know being that point person for, for the maintenance, um, you know, having people do proactive and, and open these tickets themselves, that, that just relieves uh, time from Mr. Spores that he could be doing something that he should be doing, you know, for, for the most part, and that's... And I don't act believe that you'd have time to be proactive if you got caught up. Mm -hmm. and so you <clears> had to get caught up. And it sounds to me like you're getting caught up because there's, there's, a, there's a positive flow of work orders here in Mr. Spores' point. Yeah, it, just real, real quick. <clears throat> Um, according to the contract, if they're not meeting the deadline set forth by us for, for, for completion, we can bring in a, a contractor to do that work. Um, so I attempted to do that three weeks ago. Um, and lo and behold, the maintenance staff was directed to drop everything they were doing 
and go take care of those work orders that I was trying to close with the contractors. So I had brought a contractor in to help them get caught up, and then that was not allowed to happen. So I said to the contractor, just, just, just go back and just go take care of your other customers. So, so why um, is that not allowed to happen? Well, we had, some of the stuff they had already started on, too. <clears throat> He's talking about filters, changing air filters. Um, not, really, not really something that we can't handle. Uh, it's just with all the other direction and all the other issues in the district, we're trying to prioritize all of our work orders. Um, we want to we provide the best service possible, but you know, if we have all these HVAC units down and teachers unhappy, it's customer service, basically, but for the teachers also. Um, you don't want them unhappy. No one wants teachers unhappy. So if we're dealing with a lot of other mechanical issues and, and that type of stuff, yes, uh, filters may take the back burner for a little while. Um, so to look at a completion date um, and not focus on the priorities overall, you know, is, is different. You have to paint, for example. If we're going to re, repaint something that, that's going to be uh, viewed by the <coughs> public and parents, that, that's obviously a, a bigger priority than, than changing air filters. We can do that anytime. Well. I mean, from, I, I come from a service standpoint, too, and I have things that you have to get done, things that you want to get done, and then things you can get, you get done as you can. But even the, the lowest priority thing still has a clock that runs right. in, in my business, okay? It's, uh, so if I have uh, somebody has a, you know, a, some type of unit down on a, a platform and the <clears throat> Coast Guard's going to shut them down, millions of dollars of loss. Right. They're going to be the top, the top dog, the first, the first person to get somebody. And then I have other, you know, colleges that have phones out. Important, it's not as important as that, but you have a, you don't want a student walking up to a phone, pressing it because they have an emergency and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So even those have um, a, a time clock that's running on them also. So just because I get filtered with a lot of uh, emergency things and a lot of uh, really important things, I still have to make time to get those routine things done too. And it's just how you—it's just how you manage it. I mean, that's, and just, that's where retraining and, and focusing on that part would, would come into play. And, and yeah. then understanding. He starts, he starts something with the contractor. <coughs> we can communicate. Hey, two days from now, we're going to start this, and on day three, you guys stay away. Is this really not fair to him to bring a contractor in? No, I understand why you would do it, but we have to come up with some type of communication. Because that's really not fair either. I mean, that's the contract is what it is. You know, I think don't like it. And they were told that they, they were given over a week's notice that you know, come, come Thursday, I'm going to bring a contractor and please provide me a list of what you have done. I will have them take care of the rest. And then I, I think the, the example of the painting matches this problem well. We should have subcontracted a painter who knows what he's doing, is more efficient, and if it costs more, I should pay for that and do it correctly so that we don't have that perception. And we should prioritize the subcontractor work. If I'm gonna pay for it, I'd like a handle on the prioritization of it. And I think that would work for us. If he communicates it to you and asks you what needs to be done, that's the time you can have that conversation with you. Sure, and sure. That conversation right. And the email that comes and says, okay, I'm getting a contract. Well, this is something that when we talked about it, wait, we should be able to do this and do it correctly now. Why didn't we? Right. Um, so we can improve on that. Some of these very old uh, work orders in here that are, are adding to our number and making our productivity look as low as it does, <coughs> our old instructional communication, the, the notes of the work orders say, you know, some of the things are bad. One of the things I tried to do and it, it did not look right, but it could have been done. Let's close these and reopen them with instructions. Or let's close them. You know, we haven't seen anything for a year on this. Let's close that one and move on, make our number realistic, and then reassess our priorities. It's a goal. I, so, so we have uh, just four more minutes. Uh, yeah. Sorry. So, so just, just so you know, uh, you know, we, we directed Mr. Black, the board directed Mr. Black, Black and Miller to get these things, if, if GCA wasn't getting these things done, call outside contractors in to get them done. So, you know, as long as he's properly communicating that to you guys, and, and I think, you know, to, to Mr. Trouble's point, communication is the key, right? Yes, sir. Um, I mean, 
I mean, it sounds like, you know, you know guys know what needs to get done, and there's definitely some reprioritization needs to go on, and you need to get some things settled. Bring in somebody from corporate that can, you know, some help get this stuff straightened out so that, I mean, isn't there, isn't there somebody in corporate that can come in, well, like a strike team that says, let's get everything in order so we can get a little, get a little help here, hands on deck, get, thing, um, get, thing, get the ship ready, and then even go through the old we'll tickets, the same thing. You can go through the old tickets would be the same thing. You could have right. a couple people come in, go through those old tickets, present them to Casey and say, here's what we'd like to do. Here's 17 tickets, 12 of them we want to pre-close, reopen with different stuff. I'm sorry. Okay, so I mean, so many hours a day that day. We'll take yeah. that. We'll so. take that tack one more time. Okay. And then I'll bring in uh, corporate FO. The last. I'd like to give them this. Okay. The last thing, the last question I have is, where are we at on our, where, where are you at on our staffing, for for the value fully staffed? No, we had some people leave, had some people quit, so we have ads out. We're interviewing now. Uh, we have Glenn. Uh, Glenn Camp. It was Glenn that used to work for the district. Uh, he wants to come back as maintenance, uh, also. So that that'll be a nice addition. How many how many positions? We have 24 custodians now. Um, we have four working in maintenance, um, two, three full time, and one part time, and then one crossover. So how many are short? That's that's the short. We're maybe four custodians. Four custodians. Maintenance. How many? We're fully staffed. Maintenance. Uh, fully staffed. How I mean, do these? I don't know how. Better way to ask. I mean, how qualified are the, the four people? Well, <coughs> Kenny's obvious. Yeah, right. He, yeah, he's been Kenny. there, and um, I don't know what this former employee can, that's coming back. I, the name doesn't <coughs> ring a bell right. to me, but um, so uh, Mike and Scott both have. Uh, Mike has, I think he said, ten to fifteen years of experience in heat and air. He primarily handles the heat and air stuff. Scott more to general maintenance. Um, you know, he's, he's seven, eight years uh, easy in general maintenance. Uh, so it's just more of a matter of, of motivating to get them to do the work in, in more of a timely fashion than anything else. All right. Um, last thing um, before we wrap this up, you know, you, I was copied on a couple of emails, which I, I said, you know, as interesting as your day-to-day -day conversations are, I don't need to be copied on it. All right, uh, unless something's on fire. Right. Um, and you know, this keeping keeping track of keys as people come and go and. You know, I, I thought it was interesting. One, you know, the way this person thought, you know, it was. I think that I think because of how much liability there is on your end, if the, the keys go missing, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's a rekey, and we already went through that. Or I don't know if we did we complete that at the high school. We did not yet. No. All right. I mean, I mean, that's a. She just pour up her hours like the hours required and hours reported for the last two months. Um, you've been over. So how do you get hours? Short how do you get hours over? They just that? resigned. When no, no, they, they the just, the, these just people just let, okay. I just, just did uh, the weekly report, uh, and it was, eight, we're at like 840 uh, for this past week when, when they paid off. We should be at 1,060. Um, so, that, so that's a 200-hour difference. Okay. So you increased closing tickets and running your business, and some of them didn't like that, and they laughed. I'm just a thought. Well, no, this is maintenance thing. Like, you, 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 know, you turn right. up the heat, some people jump out. So and, that and that happens. Okay. Um, but so go ahead, go ahead, finish your finish. No, we were just. I do a monthly closing labor report That's that I send to Kathleen. I can't get that until my accounting department closes the month. So it takes me another week, which we've been working on getting you the most and accurate and timely the information. Power differences is for November. Right. Okay. Right. I'm getting September this is early. Already, I'm back now. in September and October for your report. For this week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving forward from today, increased communication. Like he sends it over. I mean, I would think that he sent you an email and he thought you really could do that skill set. I would email him back saying, "Hey, that's a skill set we can handle. But Maybe we should have did the painting." I, and he's reasonable. He's going to probably email you back and say. Well, as long as you, okay. as long as you say, yeah, if, you know, he's not going to call a contract. Yeah, I, 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 as long as you say, yeah, I can do it, but here's the date it's going to be finished. <laughs> yeah. I hate to have to pay the contractor to, pay, to change filters if I were you guys. Right. right. Well, and I think we've done it. We've done a better job at communicating back and forth on some That's a job that anybody can take care of it, pretty much. But, but the, yeah, the yeah. problem is I something had to be picked. Yeah, I so, I something agree. had to be picked. And, yeah, if I'm a nursery, that would be like, wow, well, that's something that we, we can handle on. Gosh, I, I'd hate to pay for that. Yeah. So... Okay. Well, I do want to thank you guys for coming out tonight, um, answering questions and giving us an update. Um, 
due to time, we're going to wrap up our facilities committing here. It is uh, 7:26. Thank you. Thanks for the follow